my first grade scholars. It's Mrs. Layton and Rattenborough again. We are here to present to you Animals and Habitats, Lesson 8, Animals of the Saltwater Habitat. Let's begin with our preview of the vocabulary words that you are looking and listening for today. Our first word is plankton. Please say plankton with me. Plankton, thank you. Those are very small animals or plants that drift in the salt or fresh water. For example, the blue whale eats a type of animal plankton called krill. Our next word is regeneration. Please say regeneration with me. Regeneration, thank you scholars. That is the process of regrowing a body part such as a limb or an organ. For example, if one of the starfish's arms is cut off, the starfish grows a new arm through a process called regeneration. Our next vocabulary word today is shallow. Please say shallow with me. Shallow. That means not deep. For example, he swam in the shallow end of the pool because he was just learning how to swim. The next vocabulary word is slopes. Please say slopes with me. Slopes, thank you. That means inclines or is at an angle. For example, a hill that slopes downward is good for sledding. Our last vocabulary word for this read aloud is the word valleys. Please say valleys with me. Valleys. Those are the lowlands between two areas of highland. For example, the river flowed in the valley between the two mountains. Our purpose for listening today, what is our learning goal, is to find out that the one thing all saltwater habitats have in common is that the water is salty. Listen carefully to find out more about oceans and saltwater habitats. Welcome to the last habitat that we are going to explore. In the last read aloud, we explored freshwater habitats. Now we're going to learn about another kind of water habitat, a saltwater habitat. Saltwater habitats, as you can guess from their name, contain lots of salt. This means that we can't use salt water for drinking. Would you like to drink a cup of salty water? No thanks. Hi scholars, it is comprehension question time again. Remember you have two ways that you can complete this. After listening and reading the question on the screen, pause the video and you can answer by writing it down or by telling someone in your house right now. Then after you finish answering, restart the video and compare your answer to mine. Number one, what makes a water habitat a saltwater habitat? The water contains lots of salt. It's hard to imagine, but more of the earth is covered in water than is covered with land. Most of that water is salt water in oceans and seas. Oceans are huge areas of salt water that stretch all around our planet, and they are home to almost half of the world's species of animals and millions of different plants. The water in the ocean comes from rain, as well as from rivers and streams that flow into the ocean. Seas are smaller areas of salt water that have land around them or around part of them. In this next comprehension question, we have to go back to the beginning of first grade when we learned about maps. We learned about the seven continents and we also learned about the names of the oceans. Number two, name the five oceans on Earth. Are oceans fresh water or salt water habitats? Number three, 
The five oceans are the Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and the Southern Ocean. All oceans are saltwater habitats. I've come to the largest ocean, the Pacific, to show you a bit more about ocean habitats and the plants and animals that live in them. I'm standing on a beach looking out at the water. You can see that the waves are crashing onto the beach. This beach and any land that runs alongside the ocean is called the coastline or shoreline. Now, you may think that when you are standing on the land looking at the water, that the land stops where the water starts. It certainly looks that way. But let me get my trusty scuba gear out and walk into the water. Now that I'm here, I'm standing on land. It's just that the land is under the water. The land slopes downward the farther I go out into the water, which means that the water is getting deeper and deeper. The interesting thing about the ocean floor, which is the land under the ocean water, is that it isn't flat. As on land, the earth beneath the ocean waters has both mountains and valleys. Mountains are areas of land that are very high where the land peaks. Valleys are areas of the land that are low and that are in between two high areas, such as mountains. This makes some of the areas of the water in the ocean deeper than others. The Pacific Ocean is full of both plant and animal life but not all of them share the same space. The conditions under the water are very different in various places. Some parts are deep and some parts are shallow. There are cool parts and there are warm parts. Some are dark and some are full of light. Okay, scholars, let's get ready for our next comprehension question time. Number three, how would you describe the ocean floor? Is it flat and level or does it go up and down? The ocean floor goes up and down or slopes just like land outside of the oceans. It has mountains and valleys. There are plants and animals in nearly every part of the ocean, some in the deep open waters far from the land and some in the shallow waters closer to the shore. Some animals like turtles, jellyfish and crabs live closer to the shore where it's shallower and warmer. Some animals like it better near the surface of the water and others prefer to live down at the very bottom of the ocean on the deep ocean floor. They have all had to adapt to the conditions of their habitats. For instance, the animals that live in the deeper parts of the ocean have had to adapt to total darkness because the sun's light just can't reach that deep. Some fish, like the devil fish, have very large mouths and sharp teeth so that they can catch their prey as easily as possible. Other sea creatures have feelers on their bodies that help them feel where their food is. And some animals make their own light with special chemicals in their bodies, like when you carry a flashlight in the dark. Scholars, here is our final comprehension question time for this read aloud. Number four, what are some of the ways that animals have adapted to the saltwater habitats? Some of the animal adaptations include large mouths and sharp teeth to catch prey, feelers to find food in the dark, and chemicals to make light. I have now arrived at a special part of the saltwater habitat called a coral reef, which is made up of many tiny animals called corals. Corals stay in one place all their adult lives. 
They have stomachs and mouths and even skeletons. These skeletons can be on the inside or outside of the coral animals and are also called coral. When the coral animal dies, its skeleton remains in place and other coral animals will come and live on top of the old skeletons. The colony in which the coral lives is called a coral reef. So the coral reef scholars has both coral animals and the skeletons of those animals. I'm here in the Pacific Ocean at a coral reef. In addition to the coral, there are many other kinds of animals that live around a reef. I have found everything from fish to shellfish to octopi and sharks to snails and turtles. Octopi is the plural version of the word octopus. When you're talking about one octopus, you say octopus. When you talk about more than one octopus, you say octopi. Scholars, as we continue this read aloud, Rattenboro and I are about to introduce you to some amazing animals in the saltwater habitat. Please feel free to pause the video after each animal and have a great discussion with your family. Is the animal an herbivore, a carnivore, an omnivore? What special adaptations do they have to live in the saltwater habitat? Enjoy meeting these animals. Here is an animal that lies in and around this coral reef and whose name most of you can probably guess based on its shape. It's a starfish. This starfish, also known as a sea star, has five arms which make it look like a star. Although it is called a starfish, it is not actually a fish. It belongs to a group of animals that have a spiny skin all over their bodies. If I touch the starfish, I can feel that its body is covered with tiny, hard bumps that help protect it from predators such as sharks, manta rays, and other fish. Starfish are also able to protect themselves in another amazing way. If another animal actually catches and bites off one of the starfish's arms, the starfish will not die and it could still escape. In time, a new arm will grow back to replace the missing arm. When an animal regrows a missing body part, scholars, it is called regeneration. The starfish doesn't swim. It crawls very slowly along the ocean floor using hundreds of tiny tube feet. These feet attach to whatever the starfish is crawling over. As it crawls along the ocean floor, the starfish is always on the lookout for food. This starfish's prey includes fish, snails, clams, oysters, and crabs. Here is another animal that lives in salt water. This shellfish is called a lobster. Lobsters live on the ocean floor in openings between rocks. Their hard shell stops most other animals from trying to eat them. Lobsters have many legs that they use to crawl about and they use their antenna on their head to feel their way along the murky ocean floor. I have to watch out for those lobsters claws. They are called pincers and they are very strong. The lobster uses them to defend itself against its prey and to catch and crush its own food. Lobsters are carnivore scholars. They eat fish, worms, and other shellfish. I'm going to move out of the way of this lobster before I get squeezed. Looks like I moved right into the path of another predator. This is a hammerhead shark. If you take a look, you can see how the hammerhead got its name. Its head is very thick and it looks like a hammer from above with an eye and a nostril on each end. The hammerhead shark is a large fish growing up to 20 feet long and weighing over 500 pounds. 
That's about the same weight as 10 first graders. Hammerheads like to live in warm waters, so they are mostly found near the coast where the waters are shallow and warmer. Sharks are carnivores. The hammerhead's favorite food is a fish called a ray, but it also likes to eat octopus, lobster, crab, and fish, including other sharks. Most sharks have smooth and slender bodies, which help them to swim fast. Their mouths are full of sharp teeth to help them catch their prey. Let's go back up to the surface, scholars. There's a sea animal I'm sure you'll want to see, but we have to travel farther out to see away from the coral reef and into deeper water to see it. This amazing creature is the biggest animal in the whole world. It's a blue whale. Blue whales have blue gray skin and are covered in a layer of blubber that helps keep them warm in the frigid ocean depths. Do you remember what blubber is, scholars? It's that layer of fat that keeps animals warm. Blue whales are so big that they can weigh as much as 25 elephants. In fact, blue whales are the biggest animals known to have ever lived on Earth, even bigger than dinosaurs. The blue whale spends all its time living in deep water, but unlike fish, it can't breathe underwater because it does not have gills. It needs to breathe air just like we do. The blue whale can hold its breath and stay under the water for as long as 30 minutes before eventually coming up for air. It breathes using blowholes on the top of its head. Sometimes when it does come up for air, it breathes out a huge fountain of water from the blowholes, like you see in this picture. Blue whales are carnivores. They eat lots of food to build up their blubber during the summer months when food is easy to find. Blue whales eat teeny tiny sea creatures called plankton. The plankton that blue whales eat are small shrimp-like shellfish that are about the size of your little finger. It's incredible to think that the biggest animal on earth eats one of the smallest animals on earth. The ocean is so huge and deep that we could spend all year looking at the plants and animals that live there and still not see them all. In fact, there are still so many living things in the ocean that people and adventurous rats have not even discovered yet. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the animals in this saltwater habitat in the Pacific Ocean. We still have one more stop to make on our worldwide tour of habitats. I'll see you next time.